Lots to get through. Let's bring in my panel now, if I can. Former President, Victorian Liberal Party, Paul Sky News contributor, long-time Sky News contributor, Michael Kroger, and former Liberal MP, Nicole Flint. Nick, I'm going to start with you, if I can. The Murray-Darling Basin Plan, including buybacks, passed the Parliament, support, of course, of the Greens, and the disgraced former Victorian Liberal, David Van. Plebisek, she'll take anyone's vote. Give us a sense, you're on the land yourself. White-hot anger, I'm told, by farmers higher up in the basin. How do you see it? Well, yes, Peter, but also in South Australia. This is going to devastate the 2.3 million Australians who live in and around the Murray-Darling Basin. It'll be awful, absolutely awful for farming businesses, for local communities, for our supermarkets, for our machinery businesses, hardware, you know, the local pub will all be devastated by this. But, Peter, at a time when Australians are facing some of the highest cost of living prices we have seen in a generation, this will put the cost of food up even further. This is absolutely madness. And David Van is a disgrace. And I cannot believe he has done this to Victorian rural and regional communities and to Victorian irrigators. Oh, I suspect he'll be for the high jump bar at the next election, but we'll come to Michael Kroger on that in a moment. Um, let's stay, though, in New South Wales. M Michael, Jason Clare, this is Labor's front bench education minister. He's wanting the government to change its position in relation to Gaza. He, he wants a permanent ceasefire now, no surprises. His electorate is 32% Muslim. Uh, state average, I think, is under 5%. The Greens themselves are uh, mounting pro-Palestinian, let's call it what it is, Jewish hate protests at a whole lot of community events. We saw what happened in Melbourne uh, last night. Surely it's about time that the two major parties, Labor and Liberal, vow to put the Greens last, vow to go after the Greens so that they are thrown out of the parliament across the country. Peter, I couldn't agree more. Um, we are living in a very sick society at the minute and we're seeing not just anti-Semitic rallies, Peter, let's call it what it is. We are seeing an undercurrent of neo-Nazism at some of these rallies, gas the Jews in particular. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen anything worse in my life in terms of a demonstration than, than that. And the Greens have been front and centre at, at so many of these anti-Israel, anti-Jewish, anti-Semitic rallies, it is time, yes, for the Liberal Party to announce publicly the Greens will be last. They'll be behind everybody as a matter of principle. Ratbags, Labor, whoever, One Nation, whoever it is, the Greens have to go last as a matter of principle because there's been no one more anti-Semitic than the Greens and it's time for Anthony Albanese to come out and say the Labor Party will now do the same. They will put the Greens last permanently until this anti-Semitic racist behaviour by the Greens comes to an end, Peter. And I'll tell you why that's important, people at home, because, of course, uh, in many seats, Labor only gets there with Green preferences, and in some booths, it can be as high as 80% going to Labor. And Nicole Flynn, we find out today, at a Commonwealth level, probably much the same at a state level, but 60% of federal public servants are working from home. I can't fathom working for a Prime Minister and finding that 60% of the people you might want to call into the office and discuss an issue are, are working from home. Surely this has got to stop. Of course it has to stop. It's terrible for productivity. It's terrible for younger bureaucrats who might want to, you know, network with their senior colleagues and learn on the job. But ultimately, Peter, the really destructive part of this is the impact that it's having on our businesses who are often in and around the CBDs, who bore the brunt of COVID, who haven't really properly recovered from COVID, and they are dependent on people turning up to the office to then, you know, head out to do a bit of shopping at lunchtime or pay their bills or go to the local cafe or buy a coffee. So ultimately, by not forcing bureaucrats back to work, governments are hurting Australian businesses who ultimately pay the taxes to pay the wages of the bureaucrats. This has got to stop. They all need to get back into the office and they need to get back there now. Michael, the drug injecting room in Victoria, we've got one in Richmond. There's talk of another one in the CBD. There's a report on the Premier's desk. She refused to answer questions about it today. She had a, a sideshow answer on using dope as a young person. 
I never did, but I suspect plenty at university did. But, but nonetheless, she's dodging this question. And it's right in the middle of the theatre district, the restaurant district for Melbourne. We know Melbourne as a capital city compared to the others still really hasn't got back on its feet, has it? Hmm. No, it hasn't. Well, this is not next to a school, which the one in Richmond is, uh, Peter. Um, no, look, they shouldn't have a second injection room. The first injection room they have should be moved. Uh, it's not appropriate to have it near a school. And, uh, you know, we, we, it looks as if we're moving, the Labor government are moving because they're a very progressive government, they keep telling us, uh, towards uh, legalising marijuana in Victoria. Uh, that would be a regressive move. I don't think anything comes from taking marijuana uh, recreationally unless it's for... Uh, some form of medical marijuana for pain relief. But no, uh, this is this government out of control. It's about time this government concentrated on important things like stopping uh, uh, demonstrations against, uh, you know, victims of, of the slaughter by Hamas of innocent Jews in hotels. Um, you know, Victoria mm. is an absolute financial and cultural basket case under this government, and uh, I think it's only getting worse. I didn't get to this, Nicole, but we've spent $100,000, if you can believe it, teaching public servants how to do an acknowledgement to country. That's uh, on top of all the money we spend paying Aboriginal people to do welcomes to country, but there you go. Have a good weekend, you two. I'll see you soon.